All right, it's the boy Blackbeard. I'm back with Savage Salute. And what we're going to do is, is this is going to be the part two dealing with the serpent wisdom. But I wanted to include this in the North American Aboriginal History history series because, you know, you got two sides of it. You're going to have the serpent wisdom, which deals with a lot of esoteric stuff, a lot of occult stuff, and basically things to help you get your spirituality intact. But then you have a lot of serpent history. All right. And the serpent history is, is you know, a lot of these different uh, serpent walls and these different serpent structures that can be found all across the Americas. You know, North America, Central America and South America. So, you know, there is a connection between the serpent and this entire land that we call in the Americas. All right. So there is, um, you know, something that we want to just dive a little deeper into. Um, and as I said, this is going to be a continuation of the first tape dealing with the serpent. All right. So the first tape dealing with the serpent wisdom is called um, the Caduceus of Mercury and Serpent Wisdom. So go and check that one out. Um, Black Bears are talking this esoteric. I want you to check that one out first because this one is a part two to that. All right. But I just wanted to name them different so I could um, include this one in the uh, continuing series. All right. So what we're going to do right now is I'm going to read out of an article coming off of ancientpages.com. And it's dealing with the Great Serpent Mound of Ohio, the most famous ancient earthwork of North America. So I'll repeat that one more time. I'm going to read an article that's coming off of ancientpages.com. And it is on the Great Serpent Mound of Ohio, most famous ancient earthwork of North America. All right. So we're going to look into basically a serpent mound that can be found in Ohio, um, more in particular in Adams County, Ohio. All right. And as I said, you know, there are a lot of serpent mounds all across North America. Now, what has happened is, is that there are a lot of trees and moss and grass, you know, and there are a lot of structures and buildings and things that have been erected, you know, since a lot of colonialization and the industrialization of the American soil. But nevertheless, if we can research some things and maybe even when we're out on our daily, you know, um, life activity, you know, riding down the highways and stuff like that, no matter where you live in the Americas, if you look around and if we look deeper enough, we can probably see the reminiscent of the ancient serpent culture that was here because the ancient primordial American culture was a serpent culture. All right. So the Americans are basically the serpent people. Now, a few years ago, they did a good job when they had a Zionist Jew boy by the name of um, Zachariah Stinchin and a few of the other guys when they came out with a lot of that reptilian propaganda. But as I'm here to tell you right now, the serpentine people are basically are Americans. Um, if you look up what the definition of American is, of course, the 1828 will show you that it is the copper colored people here prior to the arrival of Europeans. But if you look more into the ancient um, definition of America, even before the 1828, you will begin to see certain associations between the word America and basically the plume serpent or being the land of the plume serpent. And that plume serpent is, of course, Quetzalcoatl, also known as Haru. All right. So whether you, you know, you deal with Haru or whether you deal with Quetzalcoatl, you both are dealing with the same Christ energy. All right. So Haru and Quetzalcoatl are ancestral, we can say, archetypes of spirituality to the American soils. And that's why you see Haru on the back of the dollar bill. All right. So as I'm going to do right now, um, we're going to read about this serpent mound in Ohio and we will continue from there on. So let's go into it. North America is a great continent where people of diverse cultures once lived. But most of these cultures had been forgotten long time ago. The farther we go back in history, the more indications we find showing the riches of North America's ancient history, which may have been much older and much more advanced than most of us have previously considered. So what we're going to do now is read about the Great Serpent Mound that can be found in Adams County, Ohio, and is being labeled one of the most famous of the ancient earthworks of North America. So this is in North America in Ohio. North America's prehistoric landscape and especially that of Ohio was once the rich was once rich in variety of earthwork, gigantic mounds shaped like birds, giant snakes, spirals and geometrically designed walls. Mounds and enormous serpentines were skillfully formed by unknown, highly advanced people before the dawn of prehistoric times. They can be seen in hundreds. They can be seen in hundreds because farmers came and destroyed them to level the land. But at the beginning, there were with certainty much more of these impressive remnants. All right. 
Most impressive of all these prehistoric sculptures is the Great Serpent Mound in Adams County, Ohio, considered the most famous of the ancient earthworks of North America and one of the most impressive and enigmatic archaeological remnants of the ancient world. Though other serpent mounds can be found in Mexico, Scotland, and Canada, Ohio's serpent mound is by far the largest and most interesting serpent mound in the world. Let me repeat that. That last sentence. Though other serpent mounds can be found in Mexico, Scotland, and Canada, Ohio's serpent mound is by far the largest and most interesting serpent mound in the world. So they're saying that the largest and the most interesting serpent mound can be found in Ohio or North America. All right. And that is because the ancient serpent culture basically started here. All right. So you had a lot of foreigners who came here and then you had certain indigenous people who were from here. But they moved on to other continents and created civilization there. And they took a lot of the serpentine sciences with them. All right. So that's why I told you all before that. A lot of those, um, you know, Moors that you all knew that was in Europe. When they say that they kicked the Moors out of Scotland or basically kicked the snakes out of Ireland, rather, and kicked the Moors out of Europa. But more in particular, they say kick the snakes out of um, Scotland or Ireland, rather. I think it's um, Ireland. Um, but nevertheless... It's because a lot of the people from Europa, you know, they had ancestors that was from over here. So that serpent culture, it, it kind of stayed with them. So that's why you find the serpent mounds in, in Scotland and Canada. All right. Uh, more in particular, Europe. So let's go from the top to the bottom. So we got the great serpent mound in Adams County, Ohio. And they saying that this is considered one of the most famous in North America. And of course, I'm going to show you all a picture in a minute. And they also label it the most impressive and the most enigmatic. Now, when I show you the picture in a minute, you're going to say this is rather enigmatic, and this is a massive serpent mound, all right? The great, so it says, the great serpent mound, as it looks today, at the left side above Brush Creek, viewed from the southeast. I'm going to show you all a picture in a minute. It's a one-fourth mile long mound shaped like a snake that varies in height from less than, four, from less than a foot to four, and a, four to five feet high. The distance from the snake's head to its tail is approximately 800 feet. However, if it were to be stretched out, it would be about 1,300 feet long. Quote, with its head conforming to the crest of a hill and its body winding back for 700 feet in graceful undulations, terminating in a triple coil at the tail and the alligator in Licking County, whose length from the point of the nose, following the curves of the tail to the tip, is about 250 feet, the breadth of about 40 feet, and the length or the legs or paws each 36 feet. And this is written by J.W. Foster in Prehistoric Races. So not only do we have a massive giant serpent mound, but here we have a massive giant alligator mound that can be found in Licking County. And they're saying that this one is um, about 250 feet long, has the breadth of the body of 40 feet, and the length... Um, of the paws and legs and it's each about 36 feet so we have a massive serpent mound that's in ohio and then we have a massive alligator mound that can be found in licking county i don't know exactly where that is naturally the great serpent mound and huge mounds inspire a number of theories and ideas concerning its origins and meaning it was originally assumed that the serpent mound was built by the so-called quote adena culture that dominated central and eastern north america for close to a thousand years from 1000 to 100 BC. Others do not support this theory and believe that it was likely Hopwell people were the creators of the Ohio Mound. Okay. And basically right now they're just going into, um, you know, a lot of what their theories are. It says that according to Native American legend, the sun was once swallowed by a snake. The snake could also represent Ursa Minor, while the egg represents the moon. If this is the case, then we could see the snake's tail being anchored by Polaris. So what we have is, is that not only is it a massive serpent mound, but it is also connected to the um, astrological heavens. Because as I said, whoever was writing the Bible, whoever created these pyramids, who, whoever was creating these mounds all across the world, these people were skilled and, and, and uh, well versed in multiplicities of, of academics. All right. So if we want to understand their stuff and how they work. 
that you got to be a master of all all um, schools of thought, meaning that you can't just be following one particular system. All right. Because you're going to miss it. So right now, let me show you a picture of the mound. So as we can see right here, this is an aerial shot. So clearly somebody was in a helicopter when they took this. But this is a massive aerial shot of the Great Serpent Mound that can be found in Ohio. Okay. Now, as we can see right here in the top, right up in here, that clearly that is the serpent's head. Okay. So we can clearly see this is the head of the serpent. But as we go from here on down, you can see the start see the body of the serpent. Okay. So this is a massive serpent that's found in Ohio. Now, I think that they made this into a golf course, if I'm not mistaken. All right. But nevertheless, this can be found in Ohio. And then you can see the, the coil of the tail of the serpent right here. All right. So that's the coil of the tail of the serpent. And this is the entire body of the serpent. So once again, I'm telling you all, there is an ancient indigenous serpent culture here in America. And if you want to get closer to the original indigenous people, you might want to look more deep into some of this serpent stuff. All right. So now we understand why David Icke came out with that reptilian stuff and tried to scare us away from that. Because that's part of this Aboriginal American history. Okay. So these are, these are the things your ancestors were creating. Massive serpent mounds and massive alligator mounds all across the Americas. All right. So here you have a serpent mound that's found in Ohio. Okay. A massive serpent mound found in Ohio. All right. Clear proof evidence that's still there to this day. And as they said, a lot of farmers tried to destroy a lot of these mounds when they tried to level out the land and stuff. And they said it was much more than that. All right. So just a little bit more. You know, you see the coil of the tape, the uh, coil of the snake's tail. You know, just see the body of the serpent one more time. And up here we have the head of the serpent. And as you can see, the mouth of the serpent open. All right. So here we have the full great serpent of Ohio created by the ancient indigenous American. So what I'm going to do right now is, is um, let's see if there's something else on this I want to read. Uh, oh, also, I want to say this. They do say that um, that the serpent builders and the mound builders of ancient America, they said a lot of them were giants. Let me put that in there real quick. They said that a lot of the mound builders, OK, of the ancient Americas, the pyramid builders, they say they were giants. So I did come across a lot of information that said that the indigenous Americans ancestors were giants. So whoever created these serpent mounds and stuff more than likely were giants. All right. Or at least they were may have been the, the, the descendants of giants. All right. So ancient Americans or aboriginal Americans of today have um, ancestry that were giants. OK. So some of our ancestors, yes, they were giants. So just to wrap that up, um, the mound builders, of course, of ancient North America, and that can be found in Ohio. It's a gigantic mound in the shape of a serpent. So what we're going to do now is, is transition back into some of the serpent wisdom of the human body, because you just saw a serpent symbol that was, of course, erected in the earth by the ancestor of America. But now we're going to see how they included the serpent wisdom uh, or the serpentine sciences into a lot of their other you know, uh, scholastic work. So as I said before, I'm doing some reading coming out of the Gnostic literatures. Okay. Just research anything dealing with the surface in the garden of Eden. You'll come across some of this stuff I'm reading. And as I said before, you have Adam and Eve in the brain. All right. Or well, Adam is in the brain and Eve is the sexual organ. All right. So listen up. As scripture saith, of all the beasts of the field that Yod Havah or the Most High had made, these two are the most cunning, crafty, and subtle in tempting and destroying Adam, the brain. Woe unto him who allows himself to be led on the seduced, led on and seduced by the serpent. For death irretrievable is his doom, physically, morally, and spiritually both to him and to those associated with him, as is in the case of Adam, who wished to know and become expert in nature's secrets and occult science, in revealing them and exciting within him a fictitious joy and happiness, 
The serpent acquired that influence and control over Adam, the brain. That attributed to and brought his ruin and downfall and thus caused him to suffer, also his successors. From that, from that day or from the day that Israel came to the foot of Mount Sinai, the impurity and corruption wrought by the serpent has not disappeared from the world. That's coming out of the Zohar. So what I'm going to do right now is, is correlate this to the tree of life. So what I do is, is I'll say the particular sphere on the tree of life, and then I'll give you the number as well so you can look it up. All right. So from the top down, it says that as scripture saith of all the beasts of the field, these beasts of the field reside in Yesod, which is the ninth sphere of the tree of life or the number nine. They reside in Yesod, which is the sexuality. OK. It says that all these beasts of the field that Yod Hava or Jehovah Elohim had made. This Jehovah Elohim is Bina or the Holy Spirit on the tree of life, which is the third sphere. Okay? So when people talk about, oh God, the creator, the creator, the creator, they're talking about Bina, the third sphere. Because you got to remember the Most High is, is a three in one. You know, when we say the Most High, you got to basically picture three inside of one. Of course, you have the Heavenly Father, the Heavenly Mother, and then you have the Holy Spirit. All right. So that's three in one. You know, it's like a holy trinity, basically. And the creative aspect is the Holy Spirit. So when we say in Jehovah, you know, or Jehovah Elohim, we're talking about the third sphere or Bina, the creative aspect. All right. And it said that these two serpents are the most cunning, crafty and subtle. And they tempted to destroy Adam. Adam is the brain. Because remember, like I said, Adam is the brain. Eve is a sexual organ. So the left hand serpent was tempting the brain or tempting Adam. So you have a spinal column which is connected to your sexuality that is tempting Adam or tempting your brain during sexual intercourse. All right. What is Adam being tempted with? We will see in a minute. Then it says, woe unto he. He is the initiate. So he is the initiate. That's whether you are a man or a woman. So whoever you are listening to my voice right now. You know, whoever you are right now, I don't know if you're a man or a woman, but you are the initiate. OK, and you have your own Adam. You have your own Eve and you have your own two serpents inside of you. So you are the initiate that has to go into the ritual, basically. OK, or the initiation. All right. Once again, this ain't no Masonic shit or nothing like that. We're talking about spirituality. Anyway. The initiate who allows himself or herself. To be led on and seduced by the serpent. Once again, the left hand serpent who can provide death if you're not careful. For death is irretrievably his doom. Physical death, moral death, and spiritual death. And then this death came because Adam wished to know and become an expert in nature's secrets and occult sciences. So your brain, in order for it to become an expert in the occult science and the natural sciences... It has to go through this initiation. So your brain has to be initiated. Okay. And when your brain is initiated, then your mind can be initiated. All right. And then when your mind is initiated, then your heart and your sexuality can be initiated because they all are connected. So moving on, it then says that. As in the case of Adam, who wished to know these secrets in revealing them and exciting within him a fictitious joy and happiness. Now, let me pause right here. This is going to be some real deep shit. It says that in revealing them and exciting within him a fictitious joy and happiness. Now, what is that fictitious joy and happiness that the brain receives? It's called an orgasm. So, you know how when you are engaging in sexual in the sexual act, whether you are masturbating or whether you are having physical sex. What feels good is, is of course the act of doing it. But it's the power that you generated in your physical body. Because what's happening is, is you starting to feel the serpents within you. That's when it starts feeling very, very good. Now what happens is, is that that feeling good, of course, has a certain peak. Or has what's known as a climax. And usually when you reach that climax, you, of course, you spill sexual fluid. And you'll either have to take a few moments to catch your breath and recharge yourself. But nevertheless, you somewhat expel a little bit of your energy, whether this you are a man or a woman. So 
What they mean by Adam being deceived by this fictitious joy and happiness, it is the thought of the orgasm. Because most of us, when we go to masturbate or if we go to have sex, we're doing it with the intention of feeling the master, feeling the ejaculation and that euphoric feeling that it provides us. But notice how it's very, very temporary and it is a very, very fleeting feeling. And what it does is it almost can turn you into an addict. So just like, you know, a person who has never took crack before and they hit that pipe the first time and, you know, after the first time, they keep seeking that original feeling. And sometimes the sexual act is the same way. You know, um, you got a lot of people out here who are literally chasing the first climax that they ever had in their life, you know, and that's facts. You got a lot of people who are experiencing that, um, especially if they experience climaxes a little bit too early on in their life, you know. So I'll give you some some examples like um, now this may be a little creeped out or whatever, but I really don't give a fuck. I'm about just telling people what shit is. But let's take like young men and women, for example, let's take a, a young boy. Um, when a young man is going through puberty and stuff like that, you know, his body is not physiologically really ready for the sexual act. So if he starts getting into watching pornography and things like that and, you know, playing with himself, but. But then he actually spills the, the semen or spills the fluid. What happens is, is basically his atom or his brain experienced that fictitious euphoria at a very, very early age. And because that boy has not really developed a lot of his manhood, both physically and mentally and psychically, then he will be very, very immature when it comes to a lot of his sexual experiences. And a lot of the times, because he first experienced it at such an early age, that may be the only thing he really starts to look for after a while. OK, so it's not necessarily good for, you know, when a boy is young like that to be ejaculating his fluid. That's that's not good for him psychologically because his mind is getting too used to um, ejecting, you know, and that energy and, and that feeling It's not good. Now, once again, when he gets much older. His body gets much more developed and he's more psychologically in control of himself. Then he can go into the act and do as he please, you know. But all I'm saying is, is that when 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 a boy is young, he shouldn't be doing that. If, for example, you know, Blackbeard has a son. Um, I don't really want my son having sex until he probably, you know what I'm saying, is probably like a senior in high school or getting ready to leave high school. Like when he was around 17 to 18 to 19 years old. Uh, prior to that, he don't need to be having sex with nobody. He don't know who the hell he is and he don't know what he's doing. OK, um, and that's just how Blackbeard would be with his own son. You know, I wouldn't want my son doing that um, because he just ain't gonna know what he's doing. So, you know, the moral of all this is, is that. The reason why all of us chase that nut or chase that ejaculation is because our ancestors introduced it to us because they allowed in their brains when they were in the towns of Lemuria and Atlantis, you know, that's when they first started to basically sexually degenerate themselves. Now, earlier in that tape, previous tape, I talked a little bit about our ancestors in the times of Lemuria and Atlantis. OK, this is where a lot of the sexual degeneration took place. And this is where they started to. More so consciously and psychologically get engaged into the sexual act, more so for the feeling than any type of real either spiritual evolution or by reproducing bodies, I'll say. So what I'm getting at is, is you know how today we have what's known as casual sex or so-called free sex, which basically is just, you know, us doing it to basically, um, you know, either release, you know, the urge or how we just have what's known as recreational sex, even if we're not married and stuff like that. The idea and the concept of doing that was introduced and the latter day times of uh, Lemuria and in Atlantis. OK, let me repeat that one more time. The way that we have casual sex today and how sometimes it's made it may be just sex. Like, I mean, even Blackbeard, like hell, Blackbeard is not fucking perfect. I mean, hell, I still have urges myself. I still have sex sometimes just to have it. And sometimes I may even ejaculate. I don't do everything to be spiritual all the time. Once again, I'm half devil, half half angel. But at the end of the day, um, you know, that's what it is. OK, sometimes we have sex just to have sex. 
And the reason why we do that is because our ancestors in the times of Lemur and Atlantis, they psychologically and consciously or mentally introduced that into humanity at those times. So when we 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 basically inherited the karma of them for law for lack of better words, enjoying the the orgasm. Because there was a point in time where the human. Now, I don't know how I'm going to say this because a lot of y'all just this shit too deep for a lot of y'all. But in other words, there was a point in time where the human being was perfected. And instead of an ejaculation, it was more of an ejaculation. And I'll just leave it at that. OK, I'll leave it at that. But anyway, moving on. So it says that in revealing them and exciting within him a fictitious joy and happiness. That's what was put in him. And that was provided to him by the serpent. So the serpent is the one that gives you that temporary feeling of psychological happiness when you just ejaculated. It's the serpent that gave you that feeling. OK, like I said before, when you sit there having sex as a man or a woman and you saying to yourself, man, this feels good. You consciously are saying it to yourself. That is the serpent talking. So you see, a lot of us, we are picturing a literal serpent, like a literal snake. You know, slithering through the grass like that's that's not what we talking about here. Like I said, our ancestors, they was on some whole higher shit than what we on now. They really were. And honestly, I'm gonna just be real with you. The reason why Black Bear understand a lot of this shit, because I'm a more I'm more I'm a whole lot more like them than the modern person. I'm not like most humans of today. I'm just not. You know, I'm just not. So I think that's why I'm a little more aligned with. The ancient primordial mind, because the ancient primordial mind was much more advanced than the modern human minds of today. We are animals. We are nothing but degenerate animals today. We don't know nothing about sexuality. We don't know nothing about spirituality. We don't know nothing about none of that shit. But we walking around calling ourselves new age and all this shit. We ain't shit. That shit facts. Hell, it's even certain parts and aspects of Blackbeard that ain't shit. So, no. You know what I'm saying? But as far as that, um spiritual intuitive side no 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 that's more of the ancestor okay so that means a lot of you all listening to this stuff if y'all fucking with the midnight mirage real real tough and then when i start getting into these deep 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 real deep esoteric occult themes if you get this shit then more than likely you still are activated in the ancestral primordial mind which was much more advanced than, than the mind of today i'm talking about the minds of the early lemurians or the people of mu okay the, the people of mu the ancient people of Mu and the ancient people of Lemuria before they started fornicating, basically, because fornication is more of a psychological thing. Because don't you have to psychologically tell yourself I'm about to climax before it come out? Shit, I know Blackbeard has. You know. I say this shit, I don't want to creep y'all out, but basically during the sexual act, uh, whether it's the man or the woman, don't sometimes the person say, oh, man, I'm about to come. That's a psychological thing. So when we say fornication, that's more psychological and mental. That ain't nothing physical. Once again, man, this this some deep shit, man. It is, but you know, shit. If y'all here, y'all gonna just have to get it. So as it says, the serpent acquired that influence and control over Adam or the brain that contributed to and brought his ruin and downfall, and thus caused him to suffer. Also, all his successors. So as you see, let me repeat this. It says, in revealing them and exciting within him a fictitious joy and happiness, the serpent acquired that influence and control over Adam that contributed to and brought forth his ruin and thus caused him to suffer. So as I said, your sexuality are the two serpents within your body, also known as the caduceus of mercury. And no matter how you perform sexually, whether you do it to illuminate yourself or basically you do it just to ejaculate. OK, because ain't none of us perfect. All right. But no matter what your real reason of doing it is, you are being influenced by basically one of the serpents. If you are, you know, choosing to do it just to ejaculate or doing it just to do it. Well, that means you are being influenced by the left hand serpent. Uh, but if you can get into it for some type of conscious development or illuminated development, then you can be having a little influence by the right hand serpent. OK, so that's how that goes. So we should be measuring ourselves based on which serpent is influencing us more in our lives. You see. 
you know. So for example, with Blackbeard, like I said, half of me is a devil and half of me is angelic. So shit, Blackbeard, he's being he's being tested by both of them. But one thing about me is is that I'm I can choose which one I want to deal with. You see, and there's a lot of time I'll have a sexual urge or a sexual impulse, but I don't always follow it. Okay, so that's the point. You know, every time you have a sexual impulse or a sexual urge, if you always follow it, that means you are a slave of the left hand serpent. Okay. So it says that the serpent acquired that influence and control over him, the brain. Once again, the serpent controls your brain. Your sexual, the, 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 your, your spiritual energy inside your body, which is the serpent, it controls your brain and your sexual fluid. And your sexual organ, I mean. And then it says that it caused Adam to fall. And then it says also his successors. So didn't a Adam have descendants? Didn't Adam and Eve have descendants, which was known as Cain and Abel? Now, let me ask you this. Didn't Cain end up killing Abel? And why do you think Cain did that? Because he was a he was a child of the serpent, wasn't he? So, you know how sometimes they say that, oh, well, um, um, Adam and Eve or Cain and Abel had different fathers. And they'll say that Adam was the father of Abel and that the serpent was the father of Cain. The, the serpent that they're talking about is the left hand serpent. OK, and Adam was the father of Abel, meaning that the brain controlled of the sexual act. When Abel, when Abel was was procreated and, and manifested and the left hand serpent controlled the sexual act when Cain was produced. So it wasn't like there was a third party. They didn't gang bang Eve. That's not what happened. One child was produced from fornication and one child was produced from illumination. Cain was produced from fornication. Abel was produced from illumination. And wasn't Cain a murderer because he was produced from fornication. So now let me ask you a question. Remember how I said that humanity today ain't shit and a lot of us are basically being rude and tempted by the left hand serpent? Well, don't we do a lot of murdering and killing of each other? You know what I'm saying? Going and taking our armies, going to other countries, you know, stealing oil from other people, putting people in financial debt so they can be, you know, slaves to us so they can always pay interest. Don't humans do stuff like that? Have people in poverty? You know what I'm saying? Killing folks and murdering folks for no reason. Just fucking and producing kids for no reason. Don't we do a lot of that stuff? Yes, we do. Why? Because we are children of the left hand serpent. All of us are. Including Blackbeard. Like I just told y'all, I'm one of the biggest fucking devils out here. Don't get that shit twisted. I'm one of the biggest fucking devils out here known to man. So we all the children of the left hand serpent. Because most of us don't understand this alchemy. You know? And we weren't produced the right way. Okay? We weren't. Now, I'll give you an example. Let's say your parents have um, some type of consciousness. Or let's say your parents were so-called were woke. And you, and, and you were born to parents that were so-called woke. More than likely, your parents didn't produce you under the left-hand serpent. You see? The only reason why I say that is because I have ancestors somewhere along the line that probably didn't know this science. So, although my, my, my mom and dad were conscious... And they didn't produce me in any kind of corrupt ways. But hell, somewhere along my lines before them and my ancestry, somebody didn't know the science. So in other words, the seed of the serpent is in all of our bloodlines. So all of us have a little bit of Cain and all of us have a little bit of Abel inside of us. And Cain is that, human, that, that animal part of us that's trying to always kill our spirituality. You know? So when they say that Adam's successors you know, failed because of his bullshit. That's what happened. The reason why Cain was the way he was is because his father created him in, in, by fornicating, by fornication. His father was psychologically corrupt. That's why he created it. That's why he came out like that. And that's why in the so-called black community, you see a lot of pookies and ray rays killing up a bunch of people, don't you? Yes, that's right. Because the so-called black woman of today is a slave of the left-hand serpent. She is a slave of the left-hand serpent. Now, I ain't saying that these men aren't because they are. But notice that in the Adam and Eve story, it was Eve, the one that she that caused the fall. She was the one that introduced the apple to the to the to Adam. Now, if I just said that Eve represents the sexual organ and Adam represents the brain and Eve introduced the Adam to the apple to brain. That means that your sexuality introduces the thought 
of an orgasm to your brain. And your brain don't know shit about it until your sexuality introduces that shit to it. So this is why they say that Eve was the one that destroyed humanity and why the physical woman is in the chaotic state that she's in. A.K.A. the so-called black woman. Because she is a slave of the left-hand serpent. And she was tempted by that serpent in the garden billions and billions and billions and billions of years ago. Who y'all think was around during the times of Mu and Lemuria? The people y'all call so-called black women, they were around at that time. Y'all know how old black women are? Black women are some of the most primordial ancient beings on this fucking planet. You know? And also, let me say this too. You know how some people think that black women are older than black men? That is not true. Black men and black women are an androgynous being. We've both been existing for the same amount of time. Okay? So the first being was androgynous. It was both male and female. And then that being was split in two. So she hadn't been existing more than a man. But nevertheless, that's what it was. So somewhere in the ancient world, you know, some of this science was corrupted by women. It was corrupted by indigenous women. Now, I didn't write that. The ancestors wrote that shit. So if y'all got a problem with that, y'all go check, take that up with them. Because they the ones made this symbolism the way they did. Blackbeard didn't do that. And to wrap it up, it says that from the day that Israel came to the foot of Mount Sinai, the impurity and corruption wrought by the serpent has not disappeared from the world. So once again, when the, when the Israelites was at the foot of Mount Sinai, you know, once again, remember how they was out there worshiping the, 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 um, the calf and all that different stuff? That still was showing that they were being tempted and they were slaves of the left hand serpent. So what Moses did is had them basically stare upon a bronze serpent, which was representing the right hand serpent, and it healed some of them. But that's why humanity is still fucked up to this day. It says that the impurity and corruption wrought by the serpent has not disappeared from the world today. Because we are still descendants, you know what I'm saying, of the serpent. Like, ain't none of us perfect. Ain't none of us spiritual and illuminated like we think we are. The fuck out of here with that shit. That ain't, that ain't the case. All of us are damn, have animal animality within us. And until we, you know, do the alchemy to destroy that, you know, then, then we can't be walking around acting like we, you know, thinking we good. Because just like Adam failed, all of us become deceived by the fictitious joy and happiness. Because all of us love the orgasm. All of us love the climax. All of us love how it feels to so-called nut. Or if you're a girl, all of, all of y'all know how it feels to so-called squirt or whatever. So, you know, so that proves we all are slaves to left-hand serpent. And the tempter is always fucking with us. So that's why they say that Satan rules the world because the left hand serpent rules the fucking world. It rules all of us. So most of you niggas, as soon as you niggas dig it hard, you got to find some hole or some thought to goddamn fuck with. You know what I'm saying? And once again, hell, I ain't judging y'all black bear the victim of it too. But nevertheless, that's what it is. So when they say that Satan rules the world, yes, yeah, Satan does rule this shit. The left hand serpent rule all of us. And I dare you to say otherwise. Because by the end of this tape, when this tape go off, you going home with your own left hand serpent and Blackbeard got his own. See, the thing about me is that I know how to control mine and I know what mine is. Therefore, it has no power over me. I, I control it. So I'm more like Moses holding up the staff of Mercury with both serpents in check. But most of y'all out there don't know what the hell the serpent is. And probably this is the first time you hearing this shit. So when this shit is over. You going home to be tested by your own left hand serpent. So don't be mad at Blackbeard. You know. But um, but I'm pretty sure y'all enjoy this tape. You know, dealing with some esoteric stuff with the serpent. This real ancient American science right here. So when we talk about Aboriginal American history, Aboriginal America, American esoteric, Aboriginal American occultism, boom, this is what we talking about. But y'all get y'all study on some boy Blackbeard salute. I love all the people, and I'm out.